All right, it is time, my friends. It is time, the long-awaited review. 안녕하세요, 여러분. 저는 Maria입니다. Today, we are going to talk about the Netflix original K-drama entitled Extraordinary Attorney Woo. Do not worry, there will be no spoilers in this review. Although, I can hear some of you guys wondering why that might be, because this K-drama wrapped up on August 18th, something like that, so it's been a while since it's concluded, and it's wildly popular. So you're probably wondering, why a spoiler-free review? Everyone's already seen it, Marie. Just talk about everything. Well, I counter with the fact that I know many of my uh, viewers like to wait until a show is finished before they start watching something. I've often been told that a lot of you guys don't even watch my first impressions until after you've seen the show that I'm discussing because you don't want to know any spoilers whatsoever. So I figured a spoiler-free review would have the broadest appeal. And furthermore, I don't think this series warrants a spoiler discussion because although there are a few twists, nothing shocked me so much about this series that I have to talk about it in detail. So there we go, on to the review. But first, for any of you K-drama fans who somehow have not heard of Extraordinary Attorney Wu, let's give a quick synopsis. To put it simply, this is a slice of life K-drama following Korea's first artistic attorney as she navigates all sorts of relationships, from working professional relationships to friendships and romance. Ooh, romance. I know, it's a buzzword for me as well, but I want to kind of put the expectations down a little bit. This is not a romance K-drama. Yes, the romance is adorable and you will get invested. If you don't, I question whether or not you have a heart. <laughs> but the screen time that the romance occupies is really minimal. And the main focus of the series is not romance. This would be a perfect show for those of you guys who really like romance as a subplot. The main plotline here is definitely one of an underdog or a slice of life kind of story. Let us start with prose because although the romance is quite minimal, there is so much else about the series that you can fall in love with. First up, the characters, and I am beyond impressed with this show's ability to maintain a large cast, give them, or not, not all of them, but the core cast, all arcs, and everybody else included great fleshed out personalities. Um, the core cast that do get all of their own individual arcs is the female lead's co-workers. So through the co-workers we tackle issues like maintaining a work-life balance, finding integrity as you're trying to work up the corporate ladder which can be you know full of snakes and backstabbing and undermining all that fun stuff and also just the pitfalls and struggles of dating. So we get a lot with our core group. So if the core group is our female lead and her co-workers, secondary characters would be these two characters, one of which is our female lead's best friend, and then her boss who is also kind of through connections also our female lead's friend. We also get to see how um, our female lead and her best friend became friends, which was so perfect. I really enjoyed that episode. Again, everybody is really likable, but if I have to be very blunt and honest, if I think about the characters that I think are going to stick with me the most long term, it's going to be, of course, our female lead, her boss, not like the CEO of the law firm, but her direct boss. Um, he's just such a wonderful person, really. Like, I love seeing him 
learn how to interact with her as someone who is on the autism spectrum even within the very first episode he catches himself saying kind of um ignorant things right away and he makes adjustments and it's like really nice to see that kind of character on screen so i really really like him he's also the character that struggles with like a work-life balance as he's a workaholic <laughs> and we do get to meet his ex-wife later on in the series um so those two and then also her best friend she's just such a strong personality like i think i will remember her and our female leads friendship and you know the whole you know if you know for a long time they definitely make impressions with characters out of the way let's move on to acting i want to highlight our female lead everyone does a great job i'm not trying to discredit anybody but our female leads performance deserves a standing ovation she is attorney Wu, and i am so happy the creators of this k-drama waited for this actress because if you don't know this is like a really fun little behind the scenes story they always wanted this female lead actress for this role but she originally turned it down um one reason that i heard was that she wasn't confident enough in her um understanding of autism to be able to portray the role correctly and she didn't want to hurt anybody so she turned it down and then she went off and she did um what is that k-drama called it's where she's a prince but she's hiding her identity as a woman what is that called um uh, I can't remember but I'll put it right here um, so she went and she did that drama and the creators of this one actually waited for her and then when she was done with that they offered it to her again and that's when she took it and then I have seen articles that say that she then went and consulted either like a doctor or um, an autism expert of some kind so there's a lot of thought that goes behind all of her acting choices. That was definitely a tangent. I don't even remember where we started. Yeah, that's just, I'm so happy the show waited for her because I can't think of anybody else who could do this character. Definitely hats off to them. They knew what they were doing when they waited for this actress. Okay, moving on. I'm gonna call this one like family focus because at the risk of giving away any spoilers, I'm going to be pretty vague, but our female lead's mother is a bit of a mystery slash dramatic element that is teased all throughout the series and leads to some wonderful, super satisfying interactions and moments. And this is not the relationship that you will think of. This is not stereotypical, it's not um, following any formula. I guarantee if you think in your head, okay, there's a female lead character, lead, leading lady, whose mother is not known, and that is gonna be a part of the show, I guarantee you the mother-daughter relationship dynamic that will play out on screen is not what you think of. And I love that. It's a really refreshing part of the show. And it's, it's just a testament to some great writing. And speaking of writing, I want to praise how consistent it is. This show is giving you lots of details to look at and absorb. And I definitely had moments where I would look at a detail and be like, there is no way that they're gonna be able to maintain this detail for very long. There's just too many details. I am so happy to report that they do in fact maintain details. Moments or you know little character quirks or mannerisms that they introduce in episode one maintain consistent until the very last episode. The first one that comes to mind is the fact that our female lead takes three breaths before she walks into a new room. So I watched that and I'm like, there's no way they're gonna be able to maintain that. But they do, and not only do they maintain it, but it, characters comment on it, and it becomes a source of conflict with certain personalities, and I really like that. Circling back to, you know, the Wu to the Young to the Wu thing, um, <laughs> I think that's how it goes. Oh no, now I'm doubting myself, it's been a while. <laughs> K 
characters will also comment on that interaction and I loved 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 how later on in the series um, our female leads boss also tries to do it at one point and he like gives up really quick and it's such a human moment and I could even see myself in his position all I'm trying to say is that the humor is very genuine when characters interact together. It's very believable. And we are now going to move on to the 50-50 category. If you're someone who looks at the chapter times, you might notice that this 50-50 is in place of a quote-unquote cons section. Because while I was scripting this video, I could not think of a true con. Everything that I didn't super love, there's also a positive spin to it. So that's what we're going to talk about here. The first one is that it's very, very, very episodic. Because she is an attorney, the episodes are very clearly broken down into her cases. On one hand, if you don't like episodic storytelling, you might not be a huge fan of this. So there's that aspect. But on the flip side, they are able to use this episodic nature to tackle a lot of really important um, social issues, provide social commentary in a very organic and um, non-preachy kind of way. There's also really great character development moments that happen thanks to these cases. For example, our female lead is given a case with another um, autistic person who she's defending and you get to watch how she deals with that and dealing with someone who the rest of the world is going to say you're the same but of course just because two people share a characteristic or um, a label like autism does not mean that they're the same. <laughs> so my next 50-50 point I think is gonna get me in a little bit of trouble romance like I said earlier I do think the romance is absolutely adorable I love the representation it's giving us because I can't actually think of the last time I watched an autistic character be romantic on screen the thing I didn't quite love about the romance is our male lead don't hate me I really like him 90% of the time. I really, really believe his love when he's especially trying to care for our female lead or calm her down when she's having um, an episode um, or when she's overstimulated. Those are the moments that I really, really buy it. Also when they're just hanging out, like when they go on their like really um, unique dates, I also buy it there. But the part I don't believe feels a little clunky for me and and isn't coming across like perfectly is when he just stands there and smiles at her. There's just something about the way it comes off on screen and sometimes I can see his like lip kind of dip a little bit. I just see the actor behind the character in those moments. Like I don't feel the love that I'm supposed to feel when he just stands there and smiles at her. It doesn't, mm, it's not, it doesn't work for me. But again, super cute romance. I love what it represents and overall I ship them wholeheartedly. So overall rating for Extraordinary Attorney Wu is a 4.75 out of 5 stars. Very enjoyable watch. You'll feel uplifted most of the time while viewing it with lovable characters that are beautifully written and some really great representation. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Even if it doesn't sound like something you would normally watch, because of the um, fandom significance that it has and also just the quality of what you're about to to view I definitely think everyone should just give it a chance let me know down below your thoughts if you watched it if you saved it to to binge at the end let me know I think this one might be a bit of a tiring binge just because it is so episodic and it's a, it was the perfect one for me to watch week to week personally so let me know did you watch it week to week or are you binging it now have a good day and a good night bye Oh,
to the yo to the ooh. Don't you the good to the rummy?